Hey, hey, and welcome to the next video of this series. In today's video, I think we're gonna do some refactoring because our list of classes is growing quite long and having them just flat like this is going to be very, well, difficult to find stuff soon. So I think we should fix it now. So let's get to it. I'm not sure exactly what will be the best way to do this. We're just gonna go along. I feel like the most important thing is that we group things together so it's easier to get an overview of what we have. So let's start making up package names and see if we can't do something. I'm gonna start with the package controller since we now have this controller interface and we also have a controller that implements it. That seems like a given. After that, I would like to put like these helper classes, like the size class and the position class inside of a package. I'm not sure what to name it though. I was thinking that I should name that package core, but sorry, of course, the thing with the name core is that it could also be the game and the game loop that's also core, but I'm thinking that this will be called core because the size and the position will be an integral part for everything in my game. Almost everything is gonna have it, almost everything is gonna use it. So therefore, I am going to put those inside of this core package. All right. And then let's do something about the game object and the player. So I feel like maybe a entity package. That seems like a given. You've probably seen it before. So let's just put those inside of the entity. And I would also like a package for the display. Let's just call it display for now. There will be more things going into that soon. Maybe we'll have time to do that this video actually. And then let's put these game classes inside of a game package. So the game goes into there. Oh, probably, yeah. And then the game loop as well. So now all that's left is the input and I'm not sure where this belongs. I mean, we use it in the player controller, but I don't think it belongs in the controller package. I feel like it doesn't really belong in the core package either. Maybe it wants its own package. Yeah, because maybe we want a mouse input later. Maybe we'll rename this to keyboard this. I don't know, let's, let's make an input package. It's just gonna keep the input class for now. We might put more things in there later. Okay, so that looks that looks quite good to me. Now I believe that there are import stuff that are being, yes. So let's fix that. We imported input and now the display says that it doesn't know about the input. Let's fix that. Right, so it doesn't know about the game and Yes, it doesn't know about the input. So alt enter, I'm, I'm pressing alt enter and it does auto import. Let's just go to the controller. It also forgot about the input. So let's give it the input. And also apparently it now has some unused imports. I'm just gonna check these. They seem fine. I'm gonna check this. It's fine. I'm gonna check. All right, Whoop. okay. I know there's an auto fix import somewhere. I'm not really sure about that shortcut. So, all right, that seems to have done it. And I actually think we have enough time to just look at this display class for a minute. So this is now doing the rendering of the game object. And I want to move this part of our program because this is going to grow quite a lot. I'm thinking that 
it's later going to also render our UI elements and maybe our background isn't made of game objects. Maybe our level or whatever is something else. Tiles, perhaps. We'll see where we go, but I don't think I should keep the rendering logic inside of our display class. So we're going to make a new class. We're going to call it the renderer. And I know it sounds really fancy. It sounds like I'm going to do a lot of cool stuff with it, but really we're just going to group together the rendering methods. So, oh, and if you wonder what just happened with the dialogue, it's I've uh, initialized a Git repository just for myself so that I can make commits and go back and forth between how my state was looking at different episodes. Unfortunately, I just did this, so I have nothing before episode six, but I mean, we didn't really get that far anyway, so. But now I have a Git repository so that I can go back and check history. Very good. So let's make a render method in here. And so this render method has to take in the game and alt enter. What, save delete? No, import. Okay. So the game, but we also need to take in the graphics now because the graphic graphics object belongs to the buffer strategy that belongs to the canvas that's inside of our display. So we're just going to send the graphics down to our renderer. So graphics, graphics. Now that we have our graphics, we can actually move. Sorry, wrong. I should probably close all of these so it's easier to find. So we're going to move this logic to our renderer. This is just the part rendering the sprites from all game objects. Let's put it in here for now. And let's call render from our display. I still think that the display can clear its own window, just not render objects out to it. So, oh right, we hadn't made our renderer yet. So let's do that. Renderer, renderer. I wonder why I'm doing it so hard for me. It's so hard to say. And let's create that renderer. Maybe do it here. Why not? This dot renderer is equal to a new renderer. Okay. And then let's say renderer dot render. And we have the game and we have the graphics. So cool. Now everything should look just the way that it did before, but just with a different setup like a, we've just structured it a little bit better it's easier to find things and our classes are a little bit smaller let's try it out and it's working just like it did before that is awesome so i think that's going to be it for this video for the next video we are going to implement a new helper class, the Vector2D class, and we are going to refactor some of this movement code. All right, see you in the next video. Hey, do.